Hi everybody, I'm Gio, and welcome to my channel. I like to write gay fiction, and I present it here. Gay fiction is my hobby, what can I say? This story is called Designated Driver, and for those of you who had visited my other channel, I've updated this story and made it. PG-13. It's also the first of the frat boy stories. Let's begin. I dropped ice into the blender until it was half full. You need to get out of your apartment tonight, Jay said. I don't feel like it, I said, adding fresh squeezed orange juice to the ice. You need to get over Edward. I mean, you are only with the rich snot six months. I never liked him, and he was no good for you, Jay said. I know, I know. He had an affair with some guy, and snuck out so he wouldn't have to pay his bills, I said, adding frozen strawberries to the mix. I ended up paying so the bill collectors wouldn't come after me. Daddy must have trimmed Edward's allowance, or he's naturally stingy, Jay sighed. Admit it. Even though it's been a month, you still have feelings. I don't either, I said, and added frozen mango chunks. All you've done is sit around eating triple berry raspberry ripple ice cream, chocolate chip cookies, and whatever you call that drink you make, Jay said. A virgin Monaco sunrise. It's citrus filled with vitamin C, it's healthy, and it's the best thing when you're depressed, I said and added the last solid ingredients, frozen slices of kiwi and frozen slices of apricot. I bet it tastes great with a splash of vodka, Jay said. I cut a lime in half and stared at my best friend. Damn it, Jace, stop pressuring me. How many times do I have to tell you that I don't drink? I'm just saying, don't be so sensitive, Jay said. I squeezed the lime into the blender, put on the top, and started it. A minute later, I poured the mixture into two glasses. I said, it's too soon to start seeing people. Not if I have anything to say about it. Your nights of staying home alone end now, Jay said, and took a sip. This is good. You, my eternally sober friend, are our designated driver, and I'll pay you twenty bucks. So that was what this was about. He needed somebody sober to drive him and his friends somewhere. Once again. What are you dragging me into this time? Make it forty, I asked. It's the first week of the semester, and one of the frats is hosting a get-to-know-your-neighbor party. Everybody's invited. Dancing, hot tub, sweet little honeys, barbecued, everything. There's even a game system for the gamer geeks with a 75-inch flat screen. This party will be just like all the movies, Jay said. I'll pay you 25. Frat parties are not known to be sober friendly, I said. 30. I'm not going lower. 30 it is, Jay said. It's time to wear something nicer than that old t-shirt. Tonight, I'm getting you out of the house and we'll find you some studly sex god to play tiddlywinks with. You can thank me later. I wasn't in the mood to play tiddlywinks. How did Jace push me into this? We'd picked up two guys from Jace's dorm who wanted to meet people. A surfer who had transferred from Hawaii named Hutch, and a foreign exchange student from Germany who barely spoke any English named Albrecht. You're chill, bro. Thanks for the catch, Hutch said to me as he climbed into my car. He wore green and yellow board shorts, a shell necklace, the remains of a shirt that had once had sleeves, and I'd seen a Greek statue that had almost as many muscles as this man. Hutch was probably on a magazine cover somewhere. He'd hook up with somebody in minutes. Albrecht spoke very slow, as if he were thinking about each word. Thank you for giving us a ride to the party. He was completely opposite to Hutch. Long sleeve button-down white shirt, khaki slacks, and penny loafers. 
This poor guy had the look of a deer about to be hit by the space shuttle. Who am I? Dane Richards, physics major. Five foot eight, a little on the skinny side. I'm only 140 pounds. I'm not even close to being a studly sex god. I have brown hair, blue eyes, and I'm plain enough for my rich boyfriend to cheat on me. I'm still a little insecure about that. Early evening, we pulled up to the frat house. Hundreds of people were around, chatting it up. The music was loud. And somewhere, some guys yelled, Frat boys. Everywhere, there were people with beer cans or red cups, and they held plates filled with burgers and fries. Multicolored Christmas lights hung about the porch and the front double doors. I'll find a place to park, I yelled over the music. Jace, Hutch, and Albrecht jumped out of the car. I'll text you when we're ready, Jace yelled, and he, Hutch, and Albrecht were swallowed in the crowd. Jace had never closed the passenger side door. If I went back home, they would never miss me. I leaned over and grabbed the door handle. Some guy opened the door. Whoa, Eugene, wait up. I didn't think I'd make it. A guy jumped in the passenger seat. A cute Japanese guy who smelled nice, had double pierced ears, and a single stud piercing his left nostril. He didn't look anything like my ex, thank God, but he could qualify as a studly sex god. He had black hair that hung a little past his shoulders and currently pulled into a tail, an athletic build, and he wore black shorts and an orange t-shirt that said, Frat Boy, across the chest in huge black letters. I'm not Eugene. What are you doing in my car? I yelled. Not Eugene. Eugene. It's Japanese for friend. Are you coming to the party? He said, buckling up. Soon as I parked the car, I said. Good. Somebody's double parked behind my car, and this is an emergency. Take me to the grocery store. We need more hot dogs and burgers. More people showed up than we thought, he said. And we need more beer. Great. Another case of, Dane's a nice guy. He won't mind if we use him. I don't let strangers tell me what to do, I said. Fair enough. I'm Anders, a senior. I majored in English, minored in history. I like anything Japanese, and I live on the third floor of the frat house. I'll make you a couple of burgers later, and get you plates of french fries, and you can have a couple of beers if you want. Can we get going now? Cut the french fries and beer. I don't need the carbs. And I'm the designated driver, I said, putting the car in drive. I'm Dane. Uh, June, I started to say. Godzilla roared. Anders ringtone. We need more propane, some guy yelled through the phone. We're on our way, Solomon, Anders said. What else? I sighed. Just like always. Everybody, forget Dane is around, unless we want something from him. The story of my life. We picked up everything at the grocery store and hurried back. It was twilight. A bunch of guys, all wearing frat boys' t-shirts, were in the road waiting for us, and microseconds after I popped the trunk, they had taken everything out and slammed it closed. The frat owes you, whatever your name is, Anders said, and ran off with the others. I was about to say Dane, but Anders was gone. Some tall guy, also in a frat boy shirt, yelled to the others. Take the beer in back and dump it in the coolers. The propane goes straight to the barbecues. Anything meat takes to the kitchen. Move it, frat boys. Let's show these people how we party. There must have been 20 guys around him, and they all screamed, frat boys. They were gone. I was exhausted. Seriously. I was at a party? At a frat house? This wasn't my scene but I had to wait around for Jace and his friends. This won't be loads of fun. I'll be the only sober guy in a crowd of drunks. How am I going to survive the night? I parked the car about two blocks away and followed the music to the frat house. They had at least a hundred cars surrounding the place. The frat house itself, three stories tall, dark brown brick, a tall peaked roof, and every window was lit up. It had a porch that only extended across the front of the building, and the front doors were actually double doors, 
and somebody had propped them open. The music switched from rap to alternative rock. The frat house had a searchlight out front, and somebody had put a metal sign on it that said, Frat Boys. This was going to be a strange and crazy night. I sighed. I didn't know anyone. What was I doing here? Was it worth thirty bucks? Folding my arms, I tried not to look like a lost puppy. So why did I feel like a little tenth of an ounce marble trying to mingle with sixteen-pound bowling balls? What had Jace done to me this time? The party had spilled into the front yard. The noise from the music increased. Why weren't the neighbors complaining? Somebody in the backyard screamed. Somewhere there was another chorus of men screaming, Frat boys. I pushed my way through the crowd, up to the front porch, and stared. More screaming. The place smelled of beer and pizza and burgers and french fries and body spray. Where was Jace or Anders? Help the frat out. Ten bucks and you can be a frat friend. Some cute guy in a frat boy t-shirt yelled from a table next to the front doors. Another frat boy gulped something from a red cup and yelled, Be generous, because we need the money to party. I am the eternally nice guy. And besides, ten bucks would help pay for the burger. Disaster. I only had a twenty. What the hay? I gave it to him. Somebody's generous, the frat boy said. My reward? The guys at the table slapped two stickers on me that said, Frat Friend and shouted, Frat Friend. I scribbled my name, address, and email on some paper. I can't believe I'm doing this. The cute blonde guy led me inside, and he spoke fast. Call me Twitch. You don't want to know what my real name is? Talk about parents torturing their kids. Burgers and hot dogs are on the barbecues. Beers in the coolers and the kegs. Sorry, designated driver, I said. That makes you a superhero, Twitch yelled, and ran back outside. He ran back to me and fastened a pin right below the frat friend stickers. It was a superhero pin. Got you covered, bro. This says you can raid our fridge for free. With that, Twitch was gone. Anders hijacking me and my car, Twitch speaking fast and calling me a superhero. Were all the frat boys this crazy? I had the feeling the answer was yes. I pushed past a couple dozen people and found the kitchen. The kitchen was another madhouse, with at least ten guys wearing frat boy shirts. A couple of guys formed burgers, others plated chicken or steaks, others were slicing tomatoes and onions and jalapenos and lettuce and cheese, and a couple were attempting to wash dishes. Get out of the freaking kitchen, freaking leech, and find somewhere else for your freaking free food. The freaking party's out back. Some big bruiser of a guy yelled, but he didn't use the word freaking. He used the other one. I'm a frat friend. Twitch said I should check out the fridge, I said. One of the guys saw my pin and shook his head. Ignore my friend Howard. He's a boxer, has a temper, and we're still teaching him manners. Call us in the fridge. Do us a favor, would you? The guy that was supposed to deliver these trays to the barbecue got lost with one of the dancers, and we don't have any extra feet right now. Make that two dancers. He did it. Again. How does Chaz do it? Some skinny guy slicing a tomato said. He stood by the kitchen counter in front of the window. Freak. Either freaking Chaz gets freaking cleanup duty, or I'll freaking break something like his freaking nose. Howard growled. He didn't use the word freaking. I didn't know anybody. I had no friends here, at least none that I could find. I was still depressed about my ex. I didn't really want to mingle among strangers. Once again, they asked the nice guy to do something. What the hey? I might as well help these guys out. I didn't fit in with them, but I didn't have anything else to do. Would it be too much to ask that someday Somebody do something nice for me. I grabbed the tray of hamburger patties and hot dogs and took them to the barbecues. The back of the frat house had a long wooden deck 
with benches and bright beach umbrellas. Christmas lights were wrapped around the railing. One end of the deck had a large 20-person hot tub with at least 30 people in it, and the other side of the deck had six barbecues, a table with all the cooked burgers, buns, condiments, and sliced vegetables, and a second table with two kegs on it and about a thousand red cups. Next to the table with the kegs were several coolers. Guess which table had the bigger line? Several portable spotlights were on poles around the deck and flashed multicolored beams on the dancers dancing in the middle of the huge back lawn. A table had been set up for a DJ who also wore an orange frat boy shirt. Everywhere I looked were more and more people. The music switched to rap and was so loud I wasn't sure I'd have eardrums in the morning. I don't drink. I don't dance very well. Crowds intimidate me. This wasn't my scene. Why am I doing this? Jace expected me to find somebody I could relate with here, among this ocean of people. A bunch of people were in the middle of the backyard, dancing. The DJ yelled, Hold your partner tight and get romantic. By request, a slow dance by, Pixie with one red shoe. The music shifted to something I'd never heard on the radio, and the mood instantly slowed down. A romantic rap slow dance song? Seriously? Some people left the dancers to get a drink. A lot of couples joined the dancers and slow danced. There weren't any gay couples dancing. Was I the only gay person here? This is going to be a very long night. I should have charged Jace 50. I took the tray to the barbecues. Anders was manning the third barbecue. He must be six feet tall, and his back stretched out that shirt in a pretty evocative way. In a, I could stare at you all night kind of way. That guy must work out. He had his back to me and something odd and black peeked above the collar of his shirt. Some kind of tattoo. I could definitely stare at him all night. Somehow, he must have sensed I was here because he glanced back at the very moment I was checking out his body. And he caught me staring. Oh, crap, I said. But I didn't say crap. Anders gave me a pouty kind of a smile. Eugene? That's me, I said. The guy who took me to the grocery store, he asked. Dane Richards, you kidnapped me, remember, I said. Best decision I've made all day, Anders said. A yell came from somewhere, and some guys chanted, Frap boys, and we both stared at the dancers. Though the music was slow, that didn't stop some guy from showing off his moves. It became a dance-off between him and one of the frat boys. I don't think I said thanks, but I don't have time to do it properly now. You up for swapping numbers later? Anders said. Cook now, flirt later, another frat boy said, taking the tray from me and giving me an empty one. Fill her up, frat friend. I'll get you a couple burgers ready, Anders said, and turned back to the grill. Swap phone numbers with a cute frat guy? No, I wouldn't mind, but he might. I'm kind of plain, and I'm not rich, and I don't play sports, and I dress in whatever's cheapest, and I don't drink. Anders would mind. Look at all the stylish, good-looking men and women here, drinking. I don't fit in. Face it, Anders was only being polite. As I returned with another tray of meat, this time chicken and hot dogs, to the guys at the barbecue. A guy stepped into the spotlight by the condiment table. Edward, my ex, and his gymnast boyfriend. Could tonight get any worse? Why did everybody at this party look like wealthy athletes and movie stars and bodybuilders and models and musicians? Edward and his boyfriend were at the condiment table fixing up their burgers both had red cups beside them, I assumed were filled with beer. This is just like any other frat. We show them how cool we are, flash a little money, drop a few names. We're in, Edward said. Edward and I hadn't had a final fight. It just ended. 
Was it on a Sunday I found out he'd been seeing someone else? Then on a Monday I confronted him? Was it a Tuesday he told me I was tedious to be around? Was it on a Wednesday that I came home to find Edward gone as well as all his stuff? Was it a Thursday when our internet bill came due that I realized Edward never left any money for bills? I paid it, but I kept a ledger of what my ex owed. When I called him and told him he needed to pay half, what had he said? Don't worry, I'm good for it. It's been a month, and I'm still out the money. Neither wore frat boy shirts, neither had frat friend stickers, or superhero pins. You know how famous my dad is. He went to this frat when he was in college, and once they learn that I'm his son, it's an automatic in, the boyfriend said. Edward wore some stylish tailored gray shirt, slim fit shorts that were probably made in France and some kind of designer shoe made in Italy. Me, my black t-shirt of the band Jumping Pyros was clean and my socks didn't have holes. Edward had money and the looks and his boyfriend is related to somebody famous plus he had the looks. My parents are nobodies and I don't have the looks. Edward drank I didn't. They dressed classy. I dressed frumpy. Edward and his boyfriend fit in with this crowd. I didn't. Where's the meat? I'm out, one of the barbecue guys said. Anders jogged over to me and noticed where I was staring. You know them? Old drama. My ex and the man he cheated with, I said. He left me a month ago with an expensive apartment and never left any money for his bills. You wouldn't know anyone who needs a roommate, would you? Ouch, Anders said, taking the tray from me. If he comes by my grill, I'll give him a burnt burger. Akira, we got a rush on burgers, one of the frat guys said. Akira, I said. My nickname. I'll tell you about it when we got a minute. Go get another tray. We're running low, Anders said. I ran to the frat house, where they had another tray of burgers ready, and I carried them out. Edward and his boyfriend were still at the condiment table. I walked right past them and straight to Anders. Here you go, Akira. Anders took the tray, filled up his grill, and passed it to the next guy, who did the same. Hey, Dane, any more? The guy next to Anders said. Give me the trays and I'll go get some, I said. Dane, Edward said, picking up his plate and his red cup. What are you doing here? You're not a frat boy. You don't belong here go home. Trust Edward to remind me. I already knew I didn't fit in, but I wouldn't admit that to my ex. What do I say to him? I gave him a shoulder shrug and said, Sorry, Edward. Can't chat. I've got to get more burgers. We'll talk later, Edward said. Inwardly, I said, No, he won't. I'll make sure I stay away from the rich jerk. Oh, no. With the way Anders stared at me, had he heard. I didn't run back to the frat house, but I did walk very quickly. When I returned to the barbecues with the platter of raw burgers, Edward was gone, but I stayed close to the frat guys. Maybe Edward would leave me alone if I was around people. Anders had a red cup filled with beer set on a table beside him. He took a sip, and he handed me a paper plate with two burgers on it. Two burgers, no fries. I bet you thought I didn't remember. Go fix them up, frat friend. You deserve it. I went to the condiment table, found buns, mayo, ketchup, cheese, pickles, tomatoes, onions, but they were out of mustard and lettuce. Before I could take a bite, somebody waved at me from the frat house. I set my plate down and ran back. We're out of mustard and lettuce, I said. Good thing these are the last of the burgers, one of the frat boys said, and handed me a tray. I ran it back to Anders and the guys. They slapped the meat on the grill, and one guy stepped back a little and stretched. Good job, frat boys. The tall man walked up, a girl on his arm, and said, Close everything down and enjoy the party. You hear that? Solomon says we're done, one of the barbecue people said. Frat boys, the guys at the barbecues cheered. Solomon took a sip from a red cup and stared at me. A frat friend superhero? You, my friend, are pretty rare. 
You better tell me that my frat boys treated you right. Have you found the fridge yet? That's Dane, Solomon. And he's been as busy as the rest of us, Anders said. Except Chaz, somebody muttered. Dane stepped up when Chaz stepped down, somebody else said. I shrugged. I saw the fridge, but I was too busy to do anything about it. With as loaded as that beast is, it's a shame we only had two superheroes. Time to treat them right. Akira, show Dane the fridge. He's got the run of it, and give him the tour. Tonight, Dane, you're a frat boy. You've earned it. Spread the word, frat boys. Dane the Great is in our house, Solomon yelled. All the frat boys around me shouted, Dane the Great, Dane the Great, Dane the Great. I smiled and turned away. I didn't expect this. Excuse me, but me and my honey are going dancing, Solomon said. I helped the guys carry in the trays, and we dumped them in the sink, with the hundreds of other dishes. One of the frat boys leaned on the counter and stretched his shoulders out. I'd feel sorry for Chaz, Anders said, but I don't. Why, I asked, and opened the fridge. Half the frat cooked and got ready for tonight. The other half gets clean up tomorrow morning, Anders said. I only had to glance around at the mess before I said, You guys got the easy job. The frat had stocked the fridge with dozens of juices, fresh fruits and vegetables, colas, and every soft drink imaginable. Anders, two things. Do you have a blender? And why do they call you Akira? I asked. Anders got a blender from the cupboard and cleared off some counter space for it. My dad grew up here in Vegas and was stationed in Okinawa something like 25 years ago. He met my mom. She's Japanese. And when dad's tour was over, they married and came back to Vegas. They had me 23 years ago. When I was 10, we went over to Japan and my grandparents took us to this samurai castle where everybody was dressed up like samurais and nobles and geishas. They had a demo of two guys dressed like samurai sword fighting. It was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. I fell in love with anything samurai. Akira is the name of the man who made samurai movies decades ago, and I have every movie he made, plus a lot of others. The guys found out, and the nickname stuck. The guys in front of the TV in the other room all screamed, You can do it, only a little more, and you'll have the high score. I loaded the blender with ice and chopped some peaches, strawberries, and mangoes. Samurai. I guess that's like me, except I wanted to be a race car driver, I said, pouring orange juice in the blender and the chopped fruit. I'm obsessed and proud of it. Every time I visit my grandparents, I bring something else back. Can I show you something without you laughing? A lot of people don't understand, Anders said. I turned the blender on. Get out a couple of glasses, and sure. Anders looked around to make sure there weren't too many people. Then he placed his back to me and whipped his shirt over his head and flicked his ponytail out of the way. An athletic body with a slender swimmer's waist, defined arms, and a back I would die for. It was the perfect background for the most amazing tattoo I had ever seen. A full back tattoo of a samurai, in color. The man wore full samurai armor tattooed in shades of black, silver, and blue. His sword was held upright, ready to strike, and was stained with blood. The tattoo descended into Andrew's shorts and up to his neck and across his back from lat to shining lat. The end of the sword was what I had seen peeking above his shirt collar. Wow, I said. How much did that cost you? Fifteen to twenty Saturday afternoons. That was what I did right after high school, and was the main reason I didn't start college until I was 19, Anders said. May I? I stepped forward and lightly touched the warm skin. I traced the line of the tattoo, letting my finger follow each line, each curve, each muscle. I shifted my touch to more of a grip and massaged his shoulders. Anders placed his hands on the counter and softly blew a breath out. I massaged every part of his back and tattoo. I hope you're gay because that's really turning me on, Anders said. Then I won't stop. Your tattoo is amazing. I could never do something like that, I said.
Something in my voice must have sounded sad or hurting. Maybe I was after seeing my ex. Anders set his smoothie down and turned to face me. Dane, you are amazing. Out of a couple hundred people at this party, you were the only one who helped us. You didn't even complain when I hijacked you in your car. What's better, you gave a great massage. I could kiss you right now. Why don't you take me dancing first, I said. Dancing it is, Anders said, suppressing a smile. Solomon burst in the kitchen, leading a sandy-haired guy who also wore a frat friend sticker and a superhero badge. Solomon saw us and didn't quite hide the smirk. Anders quickly pulled his frat boy shirt back on. Found the other superhero. Akira and Dane meet Ben. He's a sober cheerleader. Can you believe such a thing exists? Solomon said. What's the story? Why don't you two drink? I poured the last of the contents of the blender into a third glass and handed it to Ben. Car accident, Ben said. Alcoholic mom, I said. Too deep for a party, Solomon said, and left. The three of us finished our drinks. We're heading out for some dancing, Andrew said. Ben, do you want to come? You don't have to be gay or anything. We're only having fun. Say, one on one on one. Good thing I am gay. Let's do this, he said. The three of us went out to the lawn and joined the crowd. For a couple of dances, we kind of got to know each other. Then Ben's phone buzzed. He checked the text. Duty calls. I'll see you guys around, Ben said, and faded into the background, leaving Anders and I alone. The music switched to something slow. We held each other, swaying, and Anders asked, Alcoholic mom, what's the story? Or is it private? Overstressed executive mom who drinks to unwind. She doesn't realize how mean she gets when she drinks, I said. Abusive? You ever tell her? Anders asked. I tried a couple of times, but she yelled something about me being too immature to understand her. She doesn't get violent or anything. She just yells and gets mean, I said. I'm afraid if I drink, I'll act like her. I don't want to do that. I guess I'd been without a boyfriend too long. Or maybe I liked being with Anders. Or I was relaxing around him. I did something I would probably regret later. But he kind of, sort of, had invited this earlier. I eased closer, shyly glancing up. He was four inches taller. So I had to stand on my toes. Anders stopped moving and held my waist. His mouth almost smiled as he inched closer to me. His eyes never left mine. I stopped moving as well, and suddenly my mouth was dry. I kissed him, lightly. My left hand found his right, and our fingers intertwined. His breath was hot on my skin, and he smelled a little of musk. His mouth teased mine. His tongue tickled mine. He tasted of something citrus. A second later, I left my inhibitions with all the dirty dishes and kissed him like I meant it. Full mouth. Hungry for attention, I dove into his arms and let myself go. Our mouths matched each other, pressed against each other. Our breaths came fast, and my heart beat insane. We looked at each other before we dove into each other's mouths again. When we broke apart, Anders' cheeks had a faint pinkness in them, and a smile erupted. Sorry, I said. Um, I'm not usually like this. Parties like this, um, I guess. Um, I'm not used to them. I'm, I'm not crazy or wild or anything. Not like you guys. I don't usually kiss a guy I've barely met, and I didn't want to come tonight, but, but, tonight, you're a frat boy, Anders said, and the cutest one here. I knew that couldn't be true, but it was nice for him to say. From then on, we ignored the music and slow danced and kissed and held hands and talked. Had I only met Anders a few hours ago, 
but it seemed we had known each other forever. That's my boyfriend you're kissing, a very drunken voice said, sloshing his words as much as he did the beer in his red cup. Edward, you've had too much to drink, the guy that looked like a gymnast said. I really, 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 really love you, Dane, Edward said, yanking on my arm and pulling me away from Enders. We need to be back together. Just ignore Edward, the gymnast boyfriend said, yanking on Edward's arm. You still owe me money for the bills, Edward, I said. Edward, let's go home, the gymnast said. I want to be with Dane, Edward said. Dane doesn't want to be with you, Anders said, wrapping his arms around me. You left me, I said, to be with your other boyfriend. Don't be like this, Edward said. You loved me. You need me. He was only temporary. Edward, let's get out of here. You're making a fool of yourself, the boyfriend said. No, I'm not leaving without Dane. Dane loves me. I love him, Edward said. You're drunk, Anders said. Go home and sleep it off. Edward grabbed my arm and yanked. You don't belong with my Dane. He's my boyfriend, not yours. Mine, Edward said. Edward grabbed my arm and yanked. Ow! Edward, hands off. I don't love you, I said, shaking free of his arm. Yes, you do, baby. I'm the best you've, um, um, what was I saying? Edward sloshed. What are you saying? You never loved me? Edward, I'm leaving. If you want to ride, then get down to the car, the boyfriend said. I'm leaving with Dane. He loves me, Edward said. No, I don't. Keep your hands to yourself, I said. How do I get this man to stay away from me? He's taller, stronger, richer. That's what I had fallen in love with, and I would still love him, if he had been faithful. Just a kiss. Give me a kiss. You'll see how much you love me. That's why I stayed with you, because you could kiss. Edward stepped close enough so I could smell his beer breath. I wanted to puke. With so many people around, I could never push my way to my car. What would Anders think? I had too much baggage with my ex. I thrust Edward back and panicked, get away from me. Anders whispered in my ear, Dane, you've got friends. Tonight, you're a frat boy. You're one of us. You know what to yell. Edward, this is your last chance. Get away from me and go home, I said. We both know you don't come to places like this. You're alone and I love you. You love me, Edward said. Edward took one step toward me, his lips an ugly pucker. I yelled, frat boy. You're not a frat boy. You're too poor and too ugly and too stupid for any frat to accept you, but I've got the money to take care of you. Come home with me, Edward said. Both Anders and I yelled, frat boy. Solomon was slow dancing with his lady, and he yelled, frat boy. Edward took a step back and looked at me. I yelled, Frat boy, frat boy. Anders and Solomon yelled, frat boy, frat boy. The guys that I helped on the barbecues yelled, frat boy. The DJ yelled, frat boy, the microphone amplifying his voice. Howard and the guys in the kitchen yelled, frat boy. I yelled, frat boy, frat boy. Every frat boy marched to where we had been dancing, all chanting, frat boy, over and over again. Edward looked around at all the guys wearing frat boy t-shirts walking towards us. There must have been 50 frat boys. The music stopped. The dancers stopped dancing and stared at us. You're not a frat boy, Edward said. He's one of us, Solomon said, his arm around his lady. Dane, Akira, this drunk bothering you? Dane's ex won't take no for an answer, Anders said. Edward took an unsteady step back. But, Dane, you're not popular. You don't drink. You're not rich. You're not good-looking. Nobody likes you. You're lucky that I even want you for a boyfriend. And I thought Howard was mean, Twitch said. Howard, do you have anything to say? Solomon asked. I haven't had a freaking assault charge this entire freaking week. Get off our property, freaking loser, before I break your nose for freaking trespassing, Howard said, balling up his fists and shifting into a boxing stance. Twitch... 
I can be freaking nice. Whoever this freaking loser is, I'll let him throw the freaking first punch. The frat boy surrounded me and Anders. Anders stood behind me and wrapped his arms around me. I couldn't believe it. Something was wrong in the universe because all the frat boys stood up for me. They began chanting, Dane, Dane, Dane. Anders removed his arms from me, and a few seconds later, he pulled his shirt over my head and helped me put my arms through the sleeves. Now nobody can argue. Then Anders yelled, frat boy, frat boy, frat boy. The rest of the frat boys, there must have been 50 of them, joined in. Dane is a frat boy, Edward said. Edward's gymnast boyfriend quickly grabbed Edward's arm and pulled him back to the parking lot. He was yelling at Edward, but I couldn't hear him. It was around midnight, and the party had broken up. Anders and I sat on the deck, holding hands, occasionally kissing, and just talking. Anders wore another frat boy shirt, while I wore his. Dane, are you ready to go? Wait a minute, are you wearing a frat boy shirt? Jace said. Because tonight, he is a frat boy, Anders said. Late the next morning, I had to do chores, like grocery shopping and visit the laundromat. I finished washing, drying, and folding my laundry, including Ender's shirt. Word of advice, don't wash oranges with whites. My ankle socks turned an odd shade of peach. Good thing they're hidden by my shoes. On the way back to my apartment, I had a crazy idea. Would Ender's mind if I returned to sure right now? I drove past the frat house. Chaz and several others were picking up trash, while Howard, Twitch, and Solomon sat on the porch. I pulled up front, climbed out, and walked up to the frat house carrying the cleaned and folded frat boy shirt. Hey, it's our frat friend, Dane the Great, Twitch said. Say it's softer. My freaking head hurts, Howard said, but he didn't use the word freaking. Hey guys, is Anders around? I asked. I think he's still up in his room, Solomon said. Twitch, why don't you show Dane the way? Quietly, Howard growled. One thing about the frat. They might know how to party, but they make one huge mess in the process. The cleanup crew got the hard job on this one. Twitch took me up to the third floor and showed me which door was Anders. I knocked. I should have called first, or texted. Maybe he'll see me as being needy, or pushy, or worse, clingy. I should have waited a couple of days. Why couldn't I wait? Anders probably needed his space, or homework time, or me time. A text would have only taken a second. Had I just blown it? It was daylight now. Anders would see the real me. Plain, ordinary me. Would he want to see me again? Last night had been magic, but would the magic still survive? I was all the things that frats aren't known for. I'm not rich, I'm not a model, I'm not into sports, I'm not a cheerleader, I'm not stylish, I'm not exotic, I don't have an amazing tattoo, I don't have any tattoos, I'm not famous, I'm not popular, I don't drink, I'm a little shy and crowds scare me, I'm nothing special. Anders could be a model, he was definitely into sports, he had that amazing tattoo. Everybody liked him, I liked him, but would he like me? Once he saw what I was really like, it hadn't been enough for Edward. I'm only Dane Richards. My most impressive talent was making smoothies. That wouldn't be enough for a man like Anders. I'll return the shirt and head home. Anders opened the door, pulling a tank top on. When he saw me in the folded shirt I carried, he smiled. Half of his room was decorated like a Japanese house and had a wall of DVDs on the side, a 12-inch figurine of a samurai in full armor, and a katana resting in some kind of stand were on his desk. The other half of his room was blank. Hi, I said, shyly glancing at him, then at the floor. Whatever I had been planning on saying flew completely out of my head. Anders took a step towards me and lightly kissed me. I'm looking for a cute roommate who makes incredible smoothies, can dance all night, 
and gets along with all the weird guys in this crazy house. Are you interested? I blinked. Did Anders say cute? What's the benefits? I asked. Let's talk about it over lunch. You make the smoothies, I'll grill some hamburgers, and let's see where it goes. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Peace.